Thank you for joining us for our video on Director and Officer Responsibilities. My name is Lauren Chikowski and I am an attorney with the Community Law Project of the Chicago Lawyers Committee for Civil Rights. The Community Law Project provides free legal assistance to Chicago-based economic development and social service nonprofits and eligible entrepreneurs for their business legal needs. The following video is part of a series we developed for persons serving on nonprofit boards of directors in order to understand their role of the board of directors. The videos cover one, board responsibilities, two, fiduciary duties, three, director and officer responsibilities, four, conflicts of interest, five, the relationship between the board and the board of the executive director, and six, recruitment and orientation. If you have questions about the content of this video or need pro bono legal assistance, please email us at clp at clccrul.org or visit our website listed at the end of this video. This video is on director and officer responsibilities. In another video, we discuss the board of directors as a whole's responsibility. Here we'll be talking about individual directors and officers' responsibilities as they serve on the board. All directors have the follow following general responsibilities. They must attend all board meetings and committee meetings and functions. They need to know about and should be informed of the organization's mission, programs, and governance. All directors should be familiar with the organization's articles of incorporation, bylaws, and the nonprofit's tax-exempt status. Directors should also know when and what annual reports need to be filed in order to keep the organization in good standing with the government and to make sure that they are timely filed. Directors are also required to think critically and ask critical questions while making decisions on behalf of the organization. Be sure to voice dissent and make sure it is documented in your nonprofit's record. Directors are supposed to encourage discussion and critical thinking. It's wonderful when a nonprofit is able to agree unanimously about an issue, but there's nothing wrong with voicing dis dissent, especially if a director feels the decision is off mission, unethical, or may hurt the organization in the long haul. Be sure to review materials such as minutes and notes before, before and after meetings and make sure that they're accurate. Check all minutes to make sure that the actions of the board have been documented. As a director, you should know your limitations and when to hire a professional such as an accountant or, or an attorney and be sure to hire them when you need them. Directors are also expected to make financial contributions to the organization. This may be the only way the nonprofit profit is funded at the start. Inform others about the organization through marketing and public relations. Directors are the public face of the nonprofit and should talk about it regularly in order to gain public support and or donations. Suggest possible nominees to the board. Be aware of who in the organization has leadership potential and always be on the lookout for replacements to the board. Individual directors do not have the authority to do direct requests to, sp to staff if any exists. All direction to staff must be either through the appropriate officer or from the board as a whole. Be sure to avoid any conflicts of interest. Directors must disclose, po disclose potential conflicts to the board if any should arise. For more information on this, please watch our video on the conflicts of interest. And finally, be sure that the interests of the organization always come before your own. Your role as a director is to ensure the nonprofit's goals and mission is accomplished and not your individual goals. The next slides focus on individual officer positions of a nonprofit. In Illinois, there are only three required officer positions that must exist on a board. However, a board can choose to have more if they decide to. A single director may also hold multiple officer positions if necessary. All nonprofits must have a president. The president acts as the principal executive officer of the organization and they are subject to the direction of the board and if it's a membership organization, the members. The president is in charge of presiding over all board meetings and ensures that all resolutions and directives of the board are carried out by the organization. The president also acts as a general superintendent for all other officers and makes sure that their duties are being accomplished. The president can be an ex officio member of any standing committee or any other committee that's created by the bylaws. And the president can sign any instrument, like contracts, minutes, or checks that are authorized by the board to be executed. 
In the absence of an executive director, the president will then act in all roles and responsibilities of an executive director. So they'd be in charge of all the day-to-day -day activities of a nonprofit. The vice president is not a required officer, however many nonprofits have them. Their role is to act and perform all of the duties of the president in the absence or incapacity of a president. And it's, it's usually a good idea to have somebody second in line in case something happens to a president. All nonprofits must have a treasurer. A uh, treasurer has oversight over the finances of an organization. This doesn't necessarily mean that they are an accountant or a bookkeeper of the organization. They can fill that role if they, they need to or want to, but uh, part of the treasurer's role also allows them to hire staff such as an accountant or a bookkeeper to fulfill those duties. They are charged with making sure there's a full and correct account of all receipts and disbursements of an organization, so any um, donations that are coming in, any, any payments that need to go out, um, need to be recorded. They can deposit all money or any valuable effects given to the organization in the bank or, or make sure that they're secured in some proper way. They also dispose funds as ordered by the board, such as paying a vendor or uh, providing paychecks to staff if any are hired. They also provide proper vouchers for distribution of funds, provide receipts to any donors of um, their donations as well, and provide an accounting of all transactions and the overall financial condition of the organization to the board regularly. A treasurer can't serve in any other role that is being compensated, so if a treasurer is actually an accountant, they cannot be retained and paid for their accounting services by the organization as well as serving as treasurer. They can only do one or the other. The secretary is the last required officer position. Um, all nonprofits must have a secretary. If a director holds multiple officer positions, um, we usually recommend that it, it isn't a president and a secretary purely because it's very difficult to run a board meeting and take accurate notes at the same time. The secretary is in charge of providing all notices about meetings and any other reasons uh, pursuant to the bylaws to the board as well as to any members. If it's a membership organization, they are in charge of the custody of all records and reports. Uh, they're responsible for reporting and maintaining records of all board meetings, make sure the minutes are correct, and, and having those executed appropriately. If it is a membership organization, they're also in charge of keeping track of membership lists, dues, and requirements under the bylaws. Not all nonprofits have an executive director. This may be created as an officer position in the bylaws if they so choose, or an executive director may be appointed by the board of directors. Uh, the executive director is hired and fired by the board. Uh, they act as a CEO of the organization and is subject to the direction of the board. They generally supervise the business and affairs of the organization in accordance to any policies and uh, direction formulated by the board. They handle the day-to-day -day affairs of the nonprofit and they make sure that they report regularly and directly to the board and keep them fully informed of any activities that they're conducting. Executive directors can be an ex officio member of any of the board of directors as well as any uh, committees, uh, task forces, or any advisory meetings. They should also attend all board meetings, committee meetings, task forces, advisory meetings, and any other kinds of meetings to stay informed of the organization's work. The executive director makes recommendations to the board and committees on matters that may affect policies and objectives of the organization. They may also appoint or employ any professional or support staff that is needed in order to serve the organization's mission. Thank you for your attention. If you have any questions about this video or any pro bono legal assistance, please email us at clp at clccrul.org or visit our website listed here. Thank you.